Thanks so much for coming. It was um, it's you know really really exciting for me to um, to be showing this basically for the first time. I did sort of a preview screening uh, when the film wasn't 100% finished, very very close, uh, but sort of a private preview screening here at the Orpheum back in November, um, and uh, it was fantastic. Also, in the big theater and. I was overwhelmed by the fact that it was totally sold out. There were people sitting on the steps and around. And, um, but I can't think of a better place to, uh, to be showing the film for the first time uh, very much publicly uh, than Chatham and uh, the Orpheum. So um, thank you guys so much for coming out. And um, this is only, there were a couple of screenings yesterday, but otherwise this is the first, uh, the first screening of the film anywhere. So it's a uh, worldwide premiere. Um, and it's fun for me, too, to just sit in the audience and listen to uh, the laughs or, or <laughs> see the tears or, or anything else um, over the kind of course of the film. Yeah? It's at the freshman. Where did you learn your crafts? Uh, thank you. I, um, I've basically been in the business of storytelling for pretty much my entire, entire career, but I haven't been filmmaking specifically. Uh, for longer than about four years. Uh, before that, I ran a company that um, was eventually acquired by National Geographic, and it was a sort of a platform for young people to share stories about personal and cultural experiences abroad called Glimpse. Um, and so I was very much involved in that, and before that, in college, I, I did tons of creative writing, and my mom was a photographer growing up, so I was around photography and did a lot of, did a lot of photography. But I didn't actually start filmmaking until four years ago, so I um, mostly am self-taught in that sense. Uh, but I also have been learning a lot, as much as I possibly could from everybody um, I could for, for a long time, and that means you know, reading, uh, researching, internet, videos. Um, I did do a one-month course at the New York Film Academy in 2009. And, and I have a lot of friends who are artists and creatives and filmmakers, and so for me, that's the way I've... That's <laughs> it. Um, seriously, though, I've learned a lot from Chris. Um, and, and that's always how I've learned best, is just doing it, and um, fastest. So, you know, my, my first films were not the, the best films in the world, but... I'm so proud of them for what they are, and uh, my my first real film was was um, called Soccer City, and was I was sort of lucky enough to get that picked up by National Geographic. Uh, it's about the first World Cup in Africa, so now Hulu's showing it because we have the World Cup going on now, and there's you know other ESPN and stuff. So I don't know, it's just this evolution, um, and from project to project, I try my best to make to make it better, you know, than than the film before and and bring whatever I've learned in between the bear. So, um, um, so I, I hope that answers your question. Yes? Over what period of time did all of this come together, and how did it come together? Yeah, it was, it was an interesting process. I mean, it's, it came together basically over the past four years. Um, I started right when I got back from South Africa making that first film. Um, and that was a very interesting adjustment to go from Township, South Africa, to Cape Cod, you know, directly. And um, and I started filming when I got here, and I, I spent the rest of the summer here filming. And, and that was simply because I had heard while I was in South Africa that the house had been sold. That we had it throughout the summer, but the closing was in October, and suddenly there was no more time. Um, and I had always wanted to shoot something, but... I was forced to just act, and that's generally not how I'd like to approach a film, but um, I didn't have a choice. And, and frankly, I wish I had thought of doing this um, years and years and years ago when my grandparents were still alive, for instance. Um, but since I didn't, we had to rely on all of this archive footage, which I was happy and you know, happily able to find. Um, and in some ways, in kind of an interesting way, and certainly part of this isn't intentional, and part of it was, I think, I don't know if lucky is quite the right word, but, but, um, but nice, I guess, is that they, they exist in the film within the kind of archive footage only, and so um, they're tied to that part of the house and its history, and 
and I, I kind of I sort of feel that way about them and their their involvement in the house. Too. They're ever present, but but they're sort of this this like wonderful ghost like almost you know presence, but in a good way you know uh, um, associated with everything uh, in the house. And um, but anyway, um, to more specifically answer your question, it uh, it then evolved because there were there are a number of factors. I read finally after. All of my family had repeatedly told me I needed to read it. The Big House by George Howe Colt, um, and loved that book, and it was sort of part of the inspiration. Um, he actually was, he's been a very strong supporter of the film, and has helped out in a few ways, um, including providing feedback on the narration that I wrote, um, which was cool. And, uh, and then uh, there have been lots of other forms, too, other films that have come out, and, you know, after the first summer of shooting, we've sort of, I sat on that, and then I found how much archive footage there was, and realized that this could be a longer film, and not just sort of a short, which was initially what I thought it would be. Uh, and then we started putting that together, and realized there were little holes that we needed to fill, things that we needed to shoot, so I've come back, and it was you know, very, that the people that we, our neighbors and friends here in Chatham were, were you know, gracious enough to put me up, and of course my team, my sound designers, whatever, you know, as we kind of came back, and we we needed to get more and more footage, um, and uh, so I definitely did not expect it to take four years. I thought it would be a year or two, um, but that's how it happens a lot of times, and, um, and that's sort of the case, you know, with, with this film. Yes? Just a comment. I was so glad that you made it nostalgic without being really sentimental, because it must have been a very fine line and hard to, um, to not fall into that trap. <laughs> and I really appreciate the sophistication of it. Um, it held my interest and it was delightful. Thank you so That's much. Really yeah, the, it, it, it was a difficult film to make that way. I mean, certainly it's incredibly personal, um, not something I'm used to doing as a filmmaker, but, um, but I've always liked that idea. Um, not been afraid of it, I guess, uh, and yet at the same time, you know, it's very personal to me. It's it's you know I'm sort of, you know, bearing my heart in a, in, in a very real way in the film, but also, you know, it's my family, and so that's kind of a double-edged sword. Where on the one hand, you know your family very well, and you know sort of the stories, and you know the way they are, and you know all of that. But um, so you think at, at at first, oh, it's going to be it's going to be easy. We can just chat and hang out, and, and you know all this stuff, and. And yet, at the same time, it, you, you realize it quickly. It quickly, you realize that it becomes difficult. Um, sometimes more difficult to make a film about your family because maybe they don't want to really be honest with you <laughs> on camera. Um, whereas they're more, you know, they'd be happier to be honest to somebody they don't know. Um, or, you know, and then from as a as the, on the filmmaking side of it, you know, I don't necessarily want to push them as much as I might somebody else because. I know them, and I don't want them to, it's not that I feel okay making someone else feel bad that I don't know, but I don't know if I'm going to, you know, whereas I know all of the history with all of my family, so I know what they're sensitive to, and I don't want to necessarily push those buttons on purpose when they know that I'm doing that, you know, it's, it's, so it's kind of tricky. Well, you should restrain Yes, it was sort of, sort of friendly. It was, a, it was a, a great conversation we had once. We talked about how filming this changed your experience of saying goodbye to the house. Let me say a couple words about that. The fact that you spent the last summer in the house making a movie instead of just hanging out on the beach yeah. and some of the tensions and, and the, you know, that, that, that part of the experience. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because actually your the previous question made me think a little bit about that and I didn't say anything to that point. but. Yeah, it, it was interesting. I mean, I think it's it's a very strange, cathartic process um, that is in stark contrast to the process that the rest of my family went through. You know, because I, I was so focused on making this film uh, that you sort of disengage in a strange way from actually what's happening. So you know, it's my sister and my dad and my aunt and whoever else who are crying on camera. And there's other footage that. It's not in the film of, of that happening. And yet, as sort of difficult as it was for me, and maybe it's even the most difficult for me, who knows, but 
I never had, went through that process. I never had that, that kind of trigger or opportunity to, to, to be very emotional. Um, and that's simply because I was always filming uh, or, you know, working just in general. Um, and yet, by the same token, I'm still <laughs> dealing with that. I'm here watching this film again and again and again and, um, and reliving all of this every time. And I still get teary uh, watching it myself. And, and so it's, it's this, on the one hand, seemingly torturous you know, process of having that, that goodbye drawn out indefinitely. Um, and on the other hand, it's, it's, I think, a really wonderful, for me, way um, of, of dealing with it because ultimately what I am doing is I'm holding on, you know, I'm bringing all of that, what the house was and what it represented forward, you know, with me and I am not forgetting it and that ultimately is one of the strongest points, I hope, um, of the film um, in sort of a broader sense that, um, that while I would like to have held on to the house and if I could have done anything about it, I would have. Now that it's not there, that doesn't mean that it's this unbelievably tragic loss with no way forward. It just means that we have to bring it forward and keep it alive and inside of ourselves, you know, and then we hopefully, I think and hope, um, reestablish it somewhere else um, and kind of create this model again um, because I, I think it was so incredible. Yeah. Any update, Nick, on, on what's happening with the house? Another great question. Um, I don't know the, uh, the the status as of today, you know, or, or what may have happened. Um, if there is any change in the last couple of weeks or months, but I, I did hear. I, did, I got this wonderful um, email and sort of piece of news from uh, the realtor for the house, um, Mr. Mahoney, the, the current owner. Had put it on the market about a year and a half ago, I think, um, and it was on the market for about a year. And then about half a year ago, I got in touch with the realtor and um, just asked some questions. And he wrote back to me saying that, um, that Mr. Mahoney had, and, and you know, his wife had decided to take the house off the market and to keep it and to use it for their own you know, family um, and to basically preserve it in the state more or less that it's in. Um, and according to the realtor, the, the impetus for that, the reason that he was he decided to do that ultimately was the film. Um, and uh, that was really amazing because, um, you know, he, he was not always the most um, thrilled person <laughs> that was making the film. And so, as you can expect, it kind of back and forth, you know. Um, and, and no matter what I sort of said or assured him, you know, um, but ultimately seeing the film something that kind of sunk in and apparently has, has um, convinced them to keep it. So I think that's pretty great. Uh, also, just I'd like to say there are, uh, I know that there are lots of other people not in this room, but just a few, a handful of people here who, um, who had very important roles to, to play in helping uh, make the film, um, just sort of Starting with looking at the back, we have Spencer Gray in the back who was in the film, um, and uh, and Mike uh, Westgate who also I interviewed, and we have all this amazing footage. Of course, there's all huge amounts of footage that are not that's not in the film, um, but that is in an extended cut, which I uh, intend to release as sort of a you know kind of bonus material on the DVD, something like that. Um, or other sort of little chapterized kind of like pieces of content. Um, and um, so there's, there's ways of using all this other wonderful content. Um, and then Lex Balson, who uh, he and his, his mom, among many other people, the Westgates and, and, and maybe other people in the room, um, helped with on the Kickstarter side of things because that's uh, what helped make the post production side of this film <coughs> possible. And Chris as well. Um, Helped in that regard, but it's too, by, by recording this little Q and A, um, and uh, so yeah, I just want to thank you guys. So there are DVDs out now. They're not out right now, um, but they will be out soon. Basically, we just have to wait on the distribution kind of details before we, we do that because I'd love to release it now, and lots of people have been asking and. 
it's it's this sort of frustrating, you know, process where you just have to kind of like hurry up and wait, you know. Um, but once we have that sorted out, uh, we'll, we'll be doing that. And, and the, the sort of the general plan right now is we have this first week long screening uh, here at the Orpheum, and then we uh, we're talking to WGBH uh, and PBS, which I think would be a great home for the film, or one home for the film. Um, and excuse me. Um, we're also talking to and looking for sponsors on a few different levels to help um, basically distribute the film, meaning um, I'll be doing a sort of national screening tour, um, and there are a lot of other sort of benefits for the sponsors, but uh, one of them is to be able to provide the film to their customers or prospective customers for free or you know digital downloads, that kind of thing. Um, so that's another way that we'd be able to distribute the film, and I think that for something like this, one of the most powerful ways um, that it's going to be sort of promoted, essentially, is, is by word of mouth. You know, people just telling other people, as opposed to some huge advertising budget or a huge distributor putting it in theaters around the country, because it's 60 minutes. So it's going to be more this kind of thing, um, plus Netflix, and iTunes, and Amazon, and, you know, any of those sorts of platforms, um, which would work really well if people are kind of talking about it find it anywhere, and, and um, a, you know, like a um, home insurance company helps to be a presenting sponsor and talks about the film and distributes it through their networks, or a financial services company, or a realtor, or whatever. Um, and, uh, and in that way, I think there's this sort of community that can form around the film to help get it out there. Um, so it's kind of the plan, and DVDs, of course, will, will fall out of that. Good luck with Thank you. Yes. True. Yeah. My my dad. Um, you know, we our sort of media family in particular felt strongly enough about trying to do whatever we could to maintain some ties to Chad. That what he uh, did is bought a small um, rental property, basically. Um, so most of the time it's rented. And it's not exactly. It's not like, even close to the same kind of. Scenario, but we there's at least a place that we can sometimes come and it allows us to keep a mooring, you know, in State Harbor, and um, and maintain this kind of uh, connection. So happily, we're we're still able to come, and um, you know, it's that's important because certainly I can speak for myself and I know for my uh, the rest of my immediate family that this is one of our homes, and you know, it's not just a house. Um, so we have a lot of friends. We have a lot. Of, we have some family. We have um, a lot of ties to, to the town for you know for a very long time too, and um, that's not something that we're really keen on, on just giving up. So yeah, thanks. So I guess we might have time for one more question. Um, anyone else has a burning question? Okay. Yeah. Well, many of us were dealing with the same. And because we are, um, it's wonderful to see a perspective from a third party. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, one very important thing I just wanted to say is that it, that, that is exactly the case. It's very true. And, and most of the time, in any sort of screening context, test um, screening or, or whatever, people want to share their own stories um, about their own homes. And I, I love that. Um, because we all have these stories, and um, for you know, for very understandable reasons. Um, so I, you know, we're sort of trying to accommodate that a little bit. Um, at the end of the film, I had a little bit of information about posting pictures, basically, um, sort of hashtag home is, you know. So we're trying to kind of create this community where people are sharing whatever that is. Maybe it's, um, you know, clam chowder, or you know, maybe it's a dinner table, maybe it's sale, you know whatever sort of home is to people and sharing that um, and start to kind of leverage that to, to create a, a space for all of these stories. Um, and, uh, and that, you know, that would be, that'd be wonderful. Um, and just to, to add one last sort of, you know, um, point to that, um, there is a number up there that you can text to sign up for a, a mailing list or certainly the website is just thestarboardlight.com. You can sign up there, get more information about screenings, about history of the film, anything like that, so um, please feel free to do that, um, even if it only means that 
you know, an email goes out and you're forwarding it to people you think might be interested, that's, you know, if you'd like to support the film in that way, it would be hugely uh, appreciated. Um, but otherwise, I think we're out of time, so um, thank you again so much. Uh, of America. Yeah. Yes. It's very, I enjoyed it. Thank you so much. It's sad, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what you say. Yeah, no, it is.